How did you first start working with John Denver? John Denver. Um, I saw this uh, special he did when I was still in in uh, Britain. At that time, I was in, L in London, in England. I was working. I was 16, and he had been opening for the Moody Blues. He had been invited to do that. And then uh, I guess everybody loved him so much that they offered him a six-week thing on a new channel called BBC Two. I don't know what they have now. I don't live there. Um, but he was at Shepherd's Bush Studios, which was just down the road from where I was. And uh, I just thought, like, he was singing a song called Casey's Last Ride, written by Chris Christopherson. I didn't know that at the time, who wrote it. And uh, I fell in love with what he was doing, the, how he made me feel, how that made me feel. That is when I started seriously songwriting. My whole life just changed like that, and I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life as far as I'm concerned. I wasn't hanging up my violin, but the guitar became my main instrument, and I started writing songs for the guitar and playing them. And I met John, and I crossed an ocean just to sing and play with him first. And I had no intention of leaving Scotland, you understand. That was just uh, something that I wanted to do was work with John and, a few, and you know, a few, a few others. But because originally I had thought I was going to the Athenaeum, which is the British Juilliard. Right. But when my violin was uh, missing, shall we say, um, I could no longer go to the Athenaeum because I also had to have three years of piano. And I had a piano at uh, my grandfather's house, but he, he died and my mother wouldn't let me have it in her house. And so that kind of put the, the end to that. And I was very upset with my mother, but looking back, I realized that all through my life, and I'm sure all through most of our lives, I can see the hand of God all through my life and I wouldn't change anything for anything, you know other than I behave better. <laughs> but but I love the way that my life's turned out. And so I did cross the Nelson just to play with John. And I didn't play with him right away. Uh, we became friends. And we wrote back and forth, and we sent each other music back and forth for ages because I met and fell in love and had babies. I had four babies in five years and, and then had a little break and then went right on having more babies. I had nine altogether. And, um, but I was just, John and I were just set to go on tour just before he died because my kids were, you know, up and, 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 uh, no longer at home. And I had the time. I so the thing is I wouldn't leave them because he would do 120 cities in, in, uh, 150 days, something like that. And I couldn't do that. I'd have to leave my kids. You couldn't bring your kids with you. And uh, I, I, I couldn't and wouldn't do that. But meanwhile, I was doing all these concerts, benefit concerts, regular concerts. Uh, I was the local star uh, around the Toronto, Niagara on the Lake, St. Catharines area, um, in, in the, the Golden Horseshoe, whatever you want to call it, and wherever else we went. And, uh, but it wasn't just, you know, I, I I was still playing with, I was still in, in touch with uh, Leona and a wonderful guitarist called Richard Vertan. Um, f he was from Montreal, brilliant uh, guitarist. He had a rock band, but he wrote um, most of the songs Leona played. And so he was a very, and remains a very good friend of mine. And so um, I'm losing myself. Where was I with the, oh, coming to, to play with John? Yes. and. And in amongst all that, uh, I met uh, John, and was in, she invited me to lunch, John Baez, and I, you know, I, as usual, you take a couple of tapes um, there, and uh, Michelle Wright, and just so many other people that I had the privilege of meeting and working with, and but that was that did not require a long term commitment as John working with John would have because at that point he was the best selling artist in the world. 
He sold more yeah. records than anyone in the world. And I couldn't leave my kids for that long. So by the time I could, I was thrilled, you know, that, that Susie Green was his secretary, that I was gonna get to go and uh, finally get to work with him. And then the next thing I heard, I got a call from the fellow who owned the music store in Aspen, which has since closed down, Sandy Monroe. And he told me that uh, in 1997, he told me that John had died a week earlier and, and I had just gotten back from Jerusalem and uh, we were in the back country and, I'd, and they tried to reach me so I could be at the private uh, funeral memorial in Aspen. And uh, so he taped it for me because I couldn't be there and I didn't believe him. I, di I didn't believe him that John had died. I, I remember that moment as if it were yesterday. And, and he's, you know, next to my husband, he was my best friend in the world. And uh, I will always love him. And no, I didn't get to tour with him, but he'll be with me for the rest of my life.